So welcome back to my YouTube series about CRUD applications with Spring Boot 2.2, Java 11 and H2. In this second video, I will concentrate on creating entities. And first, as I am doing test-driven development, I will start with the test. For creating a new entity, I will use JUnit 5 for this. Then I will add the actual endpoint for creating a new entity and then the business logic for this. And in the end, I will use Postman to manually verify the created endpoint and send some sample JSON data to test that everything is running. So let's get back to where we finished in the last course. In the first course, we just did the basic setup and initialized some basic books to have about 10 in the database. To not get so many compilation errors while doing test-driven development, I will start with the basic classes for REST endpoints. So I will add a controller class for this, annotate it with add REST controller. We also need the request mapping annotation to tell Spring which URL to map to this class. So we will use API books. And that's enough for the start. In addition, I will also first add a simple service which will create the entities in the database, fetch them and navigate all the requests from the user. So create a book service class. And there is no book service class for now. So just create one. And add its service. So that's available via dependency injection. Okay, now let's go to the test folder and add our first test. We will call it book controller test. So for this test, I will create a unit test and just focus on the, the web layer. Spring offers a nice annotation to test just the web layer. It's the annotation web MVC test where we can specify the controller we want to test. In our case, it's the book controller class we will test here. While using JUnit 5, we also have to tell the test which, which extension we are using. Here we will use the Spring extension. Yes. So that's it. So let's start with the first test. We want to verify, let's say, public void. As we for now start with creating a book, we will test that posting a new book should create a new book in the database. So what should this test verify? First, we will send some JSON data to the backend and then we'll pass this data object to our service class, which will then create the entity in the backend and return the primary key of this newly created book so that we can then pass it to the HTTP response header uh, look in the location field to tell our client where he can now find the book he just created with its ID, which is assigned in the database. To send a new book request to the backend, I will first create a simple VTO class which will contain the information about the book, which is then passed to the backend. So 
annotate it with the Lombok data annotation. And let's say we can tell our backend it's the title of the book. We can pass the ISBN number as a string in this case, and also the author. In addition, I, as we don't want to get invalid data or empty data, we can make use of the invalidation here to validate the incoming request. So let's say the title shouldn't be empty, which indicates it shouldn't be null and no empty string. For the ISBN, this is also true. Let's also say the ISBN, I don't know the actual size, but let's say it's just 20 characters long. 21 characters would be blocked with a HTTP 400 bad request. The next is the author for the author. It's also a not empty field. So with this, we can set up our test. We can set up first the book request, which we will send to the backend. Let's make it a simple one. Let's set the author, it should be Duke. The title, let's say Java 11. And for the ISBN, I don't know, this random number. So now to test an endpoint with this WebMVC test, we can auto wire a instance of mock MVC, which we can then use to actually call an endpoint. Furthermore, we need the object mapper for this test to serialize our book request Java object to JSON while we pass it to our backend. So let's inject the object mapper. Object mapper. In addition, as we write a unit test, we mock any other interaction with beans. So here I will mock the book service as we just focus on the web layer and don't write a test for the business logic for now. The behavior of our book service. So when the book service method create new book is called, then we will return, let's say, the ID of one. Here, this method currently does not exist, so we will create it and we will return along and we will pass the book request here and just say return null so IntelliJ won't complain. In our test, as we don't know the exact object which is passed, I will make use of a argument captor, which is part of the Mokito library, which we can use to capture the past object of a method and can later on assert the assert on some attributes of this object to really verify that this book request was used. So let's add here a argument capture of type book request repository. Request. Import this, and here we can say when this method is called on our book service bean, capture the past argument, and however which object was passed, return one. So now let's write the actual mock MVC test. Here we can now use mock MVC. We say we want to perform a post. It's an HTTP post, which we have to import statically. 
and the endpoint will be API books. For the content type, we will pass JSON and the actual content, let's see. We imported the wrong static method. Static here. This is the correct one. And then specify the content, and for the content, we will make use of our object mapper and say write value as string and pass our book request. This will can't throw an exception, so we have to pass it to our method. And now we can make some expections. So let's say here and expect no there is a missing and expect first for the status, the HTTP status, which is returned, we will say it should be 201 created. This is kind of best practice for a post call. Nope. Say so here, step yes is created. And we will expect that our header in the response um, has a location attribute. And in addition, we can also expect this header can make can access the string value, let's say we want the location header. And for our example, it should be HTTP localhost API books and num and one, as this is the unique ID of the book, which is created in the background as we return it here with Mokito. So that's everything for the mock MBC. We can also do now some assertions on our argument capture. We will use ether that. This one. And we can now extract the value which was captured and can now access each attribute with a its getter. So here we can say author. Author should be Duke, as we specified it here. We just verified here that exactly this was, was used. Here we will use the matchers is, and we can duplicate this for the ISBN. ISBN is this number, and also for the title, which should be Java 11 in this case. So that's everything for our test. We can now run it. And I'm expecting a 404 as we do not specify a post mapping for now, but let's see what the test returns. Now it's running. It won't boot the whole Spring application context, just the web layer as we use WebMVC test here. So let's see. And here, yes, 
as I expected. It's 404 and we expect 201. That's totally okay as we do test driven development and can now start to code the actual endpoint. The actual implementation is quite simple for creating an entity. We first have to create a method which has the post mapping annotation. So Spring will map this URI with a post call to exactly this method. For the, uh, for the return type, we will use Spring's response entity class and return void in this case. So let's say create new book. We will pass our request body, which is the serialized JSON of our book request. And we can also add the add valid annotation. So our bean validation annotations here, not empty and size, are evaluated and we won't get a, let's say, empty book request as Spring will first check it. In addition, we will also inject a URI components builder. We will need this later on when we build the location header for our response. So for creating the entity in the database, we will first call our book service And let's say create new book and we will path this one here and we will get back the ID which was assigned by the database and we'll use this to create the header. For the header, we can create a URI components object and make use of the builder and say path. Let's say ID. Let's say here build and expand. And this build and expand will now our host name and port and will concatenate it with this URL path and replace the ID which we will pass here. So in the end, it will be HTTP localhost 8080 if we run it locally, slash API, slash books, and the ID which was returned from the method. To attach this to the response entity, you will have to create a HTTP header object. Let's call it headers. And say, set location and can use this object and say to URI and pass it to our HTTP header. To now return it, we will create an instance of the response entity. We have no data in our HTTP response body, so the data type will be void. We will here pass the headers and for the status, we will use HTTP status created, which is 201. So that's everything for our controller class. Let's now go to the service. It should also be quite simple. Here, we have to create our book entity from our book request. So create a new book and just set all values as they were passed by the request. So that's the author. Let's do it for the ISBN. And also for the title. So to now start, we need our book repository, which we created in the last course section. We can auto-wire it here to make use of it. And we can now use the 
save method of the book repository to save the book which we just created. And this save method will return the book again with its primary key assigned. And this we can return here so we can make use of it in our controller. So with this in place, we can now check for our test. Let's run it. And if there is no typo or anything like this, our test should now be green and we should be ready to create new books with our API. Let's see. Yep, the test is green and everything is working as expected. We can now also manually verify that we can create new books. Therefore, we can now boot our application. And for this, I will make use of Postman. You can also use curl or any other REST API client to post some data. Let's wait until the container booted so it's up and running. And I will switch to Postman. Here, I've entered our endpoint. The application is running on port 8080. I will use HTTP POST. And in the body section, you can specify any JSON you want. Here I've added a sample one with a title, ISBN of and author. So let's try to send it. And as you can see here on the bottom, we got the status 201 created. It took half a second for this. And we can also see the headers. Here we will get the primary key 11 back as we, during the bootstrap, we already create 10 books and 11 is the next primary key. So now we can also check for our validations. We can try to post a book with an empty title. This should work. Yes, as you will see it here, we got a 400 bad request and within the response, you will also see validation failed for object book request. And here it says the title must not be empty. So add the title again. And we can also verify that our size is validated. Let's enter a really long ISBN number and see what we can what we get at the response. So it's again that request 400. And here it says the ISBN size must be between 0 and 20. So that's working. That's all I wanted to share with you about creating book entities. See you in the next video where we'll create the endpoints for reading our created entities. See you.